Hi, this is Jeff Spencer, Math 120 instructor for the Community College of Denver. And this is a video lecture over percent percentages and percent applications. Um, this is our first section in the old book, 8.1, if we're doing my Math Lab homework, or if you're doing web work homework, it'll be the first homework number one. So um, for this particular lecture, I have some notes on some, some uh, methods that we're going to do, three formulas that we're going to use, and then some examples for each formula. So some basics first. If we, if, we wanna, if we have a fraction or a decimal and we need to convert it to a percent to give a, usually a, a percent as a final answer, um, we multiply the decimal by 100. So um, the first example I showed you, or, or you can move the decimal two spots to the right if you're comfortable doing that. I don't recommend that for, for most students in 120 because um, I, I sense that some students tend to, tend to move it once or twice or sometimes forget or they move it the wrong direction. So I would definitely follow these, these notes and, um, or this method by multiplying it by 100. However, if you start with a fraction, you do have to divide the fraction first. So like something like 3 eighths, you have to divide 3 by 8 to turn it into a decimal, 0 0.375. Then you multiply it by 100, and that's how we get the 37.5%. So if you have a fraction, just divide it first to get your decimal, then multiply the decimal by 100. That did have the same effect as moving the decimal two spots to the right, but I highly recommend just using the calculator to make sure that you get it right. If you have a decimal, something small, like 0 0.015, and you need to convert that to a percent, you multiply it by 100, and that shows that it's 1.5%, or that 0.7 is 70%. So that's how we're going to convert a decimal to a percent. And then we just go from, from that to the basic percent formulas. If we ever want to compute a basic percent, that percent will be equal to the portion divided by the total times 100. So the portion, the total is like, say, in, in uh, an example of like when we would use this formula, if you're computing a grade, the total represents the total non amount of points possible. The portion would be how many points you got. Or if I percent result, results from a sample, let's say I sampled 45 people and seven of them uh, were first generation college students. I could do seven divided by 45 times 100. So the portion, which is seven, that, that were first generation college students, divided by the total, which is 45 times 100, would show me that 15 point, and if I were rounded this to the nearest tenth, it would be 15.6% of those students from that sample are first generation college students. Or um, nowadays we hear a lot of news about the coronavirus. If they conducted, say, 15,000 750 tests and 215 of them came up positive, then 215 out of 15,000, I forget my number, I'm just going to make it up again, 275 tests times 100 would show a positivity rate of 1.41% or 1.4%. Okay, so those are the basics of, of taking a fraction or a decimal converting it to a percent. We will do that, but not as often. What we're going to be doing more often is be uh, using formula two. And formula two has, when, we, when we're applying a percent, we have the percent in decimal form. So I'm going to cover how we convert a percent to a decimal form. So anytime you have a, a, a percent, you're given a percent and you need to apply it, you have to convert it to decimal form. Uh, so this is how I'm going to do, show you this. Anytime I have a percent, I divide the percent by 100, which has the same effect as moving the decimal two spots to the right, or to, sorry, to the left. So 45 divided by 100, 45%, if I divide it by 100, that's 0 0.45. Or if I have 3.75% and I divide that by 100, then I apply it, the decimal form is 0.0375%. 1% is 0.01. I want to show you this one though. This is a mixed number percent, 3 and 5 eighths percent. Sometimes you see interest rates presented like that as a mixed number. So to do this, it's actually a two-step process. You do have to do 3 plus 5 divided by 8. That's the mixed number. And then um, that represents 3.625%. Then we divide that by 100, and then we can apply it in whatever formula we're going to do. So 0 0.03625. So remember, anytime we have a percent you want to, and you're going to apply it in a problem, you need to 
to convert it to a decimal, I recommend dividing by 100. If you're comfortable moving two spots to the left, you can do that too. So this formula, percent in decimal form times the total gives the portion. So some uses are going to be like when we compute sales tax, discounts, like maybe there's a 15% discount or a 10% discount or a 20% discount, or sometimes a raises, which this, this example will show you, or this example goes over a raise. So first one is what is 7.3% of 550? So for, you know, for example, I didn't write all the words in there, but let's say you buy something for $550 and the sales tax is 7.3%. Um, so if we want to know what the sales tax is, then we have to do 0 0.073. So I, for, I skipped that step, but 7.3, I need to convert it to a decimal. So I divide it by 100. So now I have the percent in decimal form, and then I multiply it times the total cost of the product, which is 550. And then it shows that the tax is $40.15. So that's what this is showing that the tax is $40.15 and tax is added on. In case I needed to find the total cost, sometimes I ask you that in this class, That's you just have to know that that's, um, I'm not applying the formula, you just know that, that you add that on. So 550 plus 40.15 is 5.90 and 15 cents. Okay. Um, all right, now notice this one. This one, the first one said, what is 7.3% of 550? This one says 7.3% of what is 550? So there's a big difference here. 7.3% of some number that we don't know, which is the total that we don't know, gives us the portion of 550. Now, if you use, uh, if you think about this a little bit, you have to understand that the answer that we're going to find has to be much bigger than 550 because, because, if we take 7.3% of that number, we get 550, and 7.3% is a small percent. So we have to understand that we can't do 0 0.073 times 550 here and, and get our answer. So what we have to do here, notice this is the other way. There's two ways to apply this formula. Either we multiply or we set up this equation like this. So we do 0 0.073. That's the percent in decimal form. That's this part but I don't know the total, so I'll call that X equals $550. That's the portion, okay? So 7.3% represents the portion, just like 550, of what we don't know what the total is. In order to solve this equation, if you remember from basic algebra, when you have a number times a variable equals another number, to solve for the variable, you have to divide by that number. So I'm gonna divide both sides by, um, 0 0.073, which on the left side gives me X, but basically you have to know that you're going to be doing 550 divided by 0 0.073. The other one we multiplied, here we're dividing because we're looking for the unknown total. So I have to do 550 divided by 0 0.073, and that gives me this amount. Now remember, this is a monetary amount, so I have to round this to the nearest cent. So I, when I rounded the nearest cent, the cent is the second decimal place. So I'm looking at this and saying, okay, am I going to keep this a four or am I going to round up? Well, since this is a six, I'm going to round up. So this is 7,534 dollars and how many cents? 25 cents. Okay, so there's my answer. So if I did 7.3% of 7,534 and 25 cents, I get 550. Okay, so next one. You make thirteen twenty-five per hour and get a five percent raise. What will your raise in new pay be? So this is a good way. Like you know, your employer says, "Hey, we're going to give everybody a five percent raise." It's a good way to check to make sure that they're doing this correctly on your next pay. So five percent of what? Well, five percent of what you were getting. So we're going to take zero. So five percent as a decimal is five divided by a hundred. 0.05, so 0.05, that percent, 0.05, you're getting a 5% raise of what? Well, of what you made last time, or what you made previously, which was 13.25, and this will give you the portion that represents your raise. So let's do that times 
And this means that we're getting essentially, now remember this is money again, so we have to round to the nearest cent. So this is gonna be a $0 and 66 cent raise. So that's the raise. And then the new pay would just be that 0 0.66 plus, so 0 0.66 plus the 13.25. So our new pay should be 13.91. And that's a way to check to make sure that, you know, that HR or whoever's paying you is paying you correctly, especially, you know, 5% raise is a, is the, is kind of the low number of getting a good raise. I, I generally think that if you're getting a raise below 5%, you'll take it, but it's not a good, it's not like good or great. Five is good. And then really anything above that is, is really good. So 1391. All right. Is the new pay. All right. And then the last example that I have for formula two here, let me see if I can squeeze it back up here. Um, I was just watching a basketball game with uh, Damian Lillard. I probably spelled his name wrong. Uh, but Damian Lillard scored 50. I just made up these numbers. But he scored 52 points in his last game, which was 45% of his team's total points in the game. How much did his team score? So here's the thing. We don't know the total. We know the portion of, like, he scored a portion of his team's points, 52. So his portion is 52. We know that that's 45%, but we don't know the total. So once again, this is going to be the division type of example, like this second example. So here I'm going to do 0 0.45. That's the decimal form. Just remember, I'll show you. 45% divided by 100 is 0 0.45. I don't know the total. Come on, Microsoft Word. Okay, so I don't know the total. Times X is his portion, which was 52 points. So if I want to figure out how many total points his team scored, then I take 52 and I divide it by 0 0.45, and that will tell me how many points. Now, this is a number of points, so I'm going to have to round to the nearest whole number, divided by 0 0.45, and it's 116 points rounded. So 116 points. Come on, Microsoft Word. 116 points would be how what would the total that the team scored. Okay, I'm gonna do the the last part of this in a, a second video. So we'll see you right after this.